Hello YouTubers, 98 Mercedes E430 and we will be replacing radiator on this beast. So first of all we need to drain the coolant and we need to get under the car. If you still have the shields, it might be the uh, engine shield and then the front shield. To drain the coolant there is that red cap and also there is a connection for the hose so you can connect the hose and drain it though this frame is all bent and I cannot get the hose on I will also show you why we are replacing it so this frame got bent over there and it's pinched the radiator and made it leak so we will try to replace it and straight out the frame but first of all as i said we need to drain the coolant and you should just get this plug loosened and it should start draining if you can attach a hose it will be much cleaner job but in case you cannot we'll just capture it open next we will open the fill rather a cap and that should let fluid drain much better so while the fluid is draining we will remove those two clips on both sides so this tongue pointing forward and also we can next we will remove this grill so we'll turn this 90 degrees and it should come up so we need this way This piece just fall off. There is a little hose clamp holding it on the other side. Now we'll remove two radiator clamps on both sides. As well as bolts on this cross member just a 10 mil Next we will get out the air filter box. Get the top part and clamp. filter uh, it may need to use new filter now we'll just make sure that this is loose and we'll pull this box out from its route
Next we'll remove 10 millimeter bolts that are holding um, power steering coolant line. Let's bracket like this. And actually it seems like it's supposed to be in one piece. So. Next we'll remove 13 mil bolt on a horn. So we have this stop that is on top of the horn, and then horn itself. So this is loose now. So now we can remove this bracket, it's 10 mil. And coolant is still draining, so we don't want to get under the vehicle just yet. This is loose, this is loose. Next we will unplug the fence, remove the cover. So this one was super difficult to remove. So we had to remove this part out of that bracket and then he used two hands to wiggle it out but it was seized really badly so now when this is disconnected we will remove two 10 mils on the condenser and on the fans so those two bolts are really short I'm gonna show you. So now those fans supposed to go out. Here they are. Next we'll remove ten bolts, ten mil bolts. Condenser and this one is spinning inside. And this one came off. So I need to figure out how to lock that piece in place. Just So at this point, nothing is attached to radiator anymore, so we'll go ahead and remove this overflow hose and the upper radiator hose. At this point I have drained almost 8 liters of coolant, so I think we're getting quite close for the system to be drained. Hose and upper radiator hose. All right, so now we need to get down, remove the transmission lines and lower radiator hoses. So we're under the vehicle. This is basically the middle of the radiator. And usually you would have uh, this clamp 
attached to the bottom of the radiator so you need, might need to lose that and then you need to remove this connection basically to disassemble so it's 19 and 17 mil this is transmission line but before removing it we will clean it to make sure that nothing gets in okay so now we're ready to remove this hose so I have an oil pan ready since you will need to capture all the transmission fluid coming out from here and obviously have some transmission fluid ready to top up your transmission after you're done with the radiator so next we will remove the other line on the right bottom corner of the radiator same thing 17 and 19 and have an oil pan underneath to catch the fluid. So this line is removed now and draining. So next we will remove this lower radiator hose and this hose from here by removing those two clamps. So those two hose clamps are loose. So now we can remove the hoses. A little bit of coolant coming out of it. Same as the other one. Next what we will do is we need to get the fan housing out of that bracket over there. So if we don't remove it we will be able to get the radiator up. So this is loose. So now nothing is holding it. And we should be able to remove it unless those that bent bracket on both sides might hold it. But we'll give it a try. Move the bed on one side so I hope it will move. Move a bit on this one, so I think that will be procedure to get it out one side at a time. Because of those two bands. On both sides. Okay, I think you got the approach. Okay, so two more things that we need to disengage to get the radiator out. This is the fan housing. So we need to lift it up and get it disengaged one as well as the other side and this might be a good idea to get it done before you disconnect your transmission lines okay so here is the radiator and the damage is on this side so here's one color line the other color line those are two brackets where we disengage the fan housing so one more thing to add to the removal procedure this plastic piece was kind of on the way of the transmission cooler lines so you need to make sure that you, you know, lift it up and pull it towards yourself to get it removed so next what I will do I will get those brackets straightened out and we'll place new radiator in. Okay, so I was able to move the condenser out of the way without disconnecting it. So now you can see how that bracket is bent over here. So it has to go down and same here. 
so it has to go down and to the front. Alright, so after a bit of hammering, I have straightened this out, straightened this out, you can see now it's all even at the front, straightened this out, this was pushed up. Now I will see if I can get my condenser back with this in place where it's supposed to be. So here's the new radiator, looks the same from the outside. So now what we need to do is to transfer those transmission cooler lines, since this one does not have with those. So remove one, one here, one here and get them transferred. So I have put the piece of cupboard underneath since there is a chance that we will get some transmission fluid coming out. So before you remove this, again, clean everything so there is no debris going inside when you remove this line. So, and then there is 10 mil that's holding this bracket. So in terms of part, this is Agility 8012645 and I can see right away that those two ports are different. So in here we have female and male over there, it's opposite on this one. One week later and we back in business. So I received the new radiator was the correct prefaces on the bottom. We have a male and on the top we have female. So I'll get the transmission lines installed first. So I have connected the transmission lines. I had to transfer this uh, like nut from the old radiator, connected this line and connected the other one in the middle of the radiator, bottom. So then what I've done, I have pressure tested it. So you can see like just with the soapy water and some compressed air pushing into those lines. And you can see quite a few bubbles coming in. So um, I don't plug it with anything. I just use uh, this in one line like that and closing the other hole with my finger so I'll give it another crank for this one and we'll test it again so I ended up replacing the bottom washer on this connection since it was still leaking uh, so I guess this is a good test to do before you get everything back on the car the last thing you want to have a transmission oil leak after you fix the coolant leak. So now uh, we should be good to put it back where it's supposed to go. The radiator is in, so let's take a quick look from the bottom. So at this point you want to make sure that two plastic legs on the bottom of the radiator fit in this crescent-like um, rubber grommet on this side and this side. So this rubber piece is shared by the condenser and the radiator. So next what we will do, we will get this <coughs> uh, house in place. We removed it last. So now when those two are lined up, 
we will go up and make sure that one on the side just over here can slide in actually I can see it from here that it's sliding in so now just a matter of getting those two inside We need to go up and push that piece in. This is the part I was talking about. So we want to make sure that this slides in. Now our housing should be in place. Just need to bend this cable, right? Nice, so everything lines up. We we'll need to go this back together since it was damaged before. Awesome. Next, we will attach the condenser to the radiator. Two things uh, you might need to transfer those two square nuts uh, from the old radiator to the new one. I did not have the new ones. And then on the back side of the condenser are those two metal bushings that go inside. Make sure that they are in. In my case, one fall out. So now we can get two 10 mil bolts in to get this guy attached. So this side I got started. This one, the hole does not line up, like the nut holder and the metal piece, so I will just use a drill bit to make this hole slightly bigger. Those two bolts are installed. Next we will do electrical fence. So on the bottom of the Condenser, there is two plastic slots where the first two legs from the fence should go. So make sure that it, it's in properly. Otherwise, you won't be able to get your screws in. See now it's all leveled with the condenser, so now we'll just put two more 10 mil bolts in and get that secured. Next we'll connect this electrical plug, and as you remember it was super tight and we took it off, so now put it inside the bracket. Next we'll install this front bracket, and just one 10 mil bolt. Next, we will do transmission, uh, sorry, power steam cooling lines. So we have bracket in here, but we need to 
put the bracket on the other side since that one fall apart. Just like this. So it's also screw with a 10 mil head. Same on the other side. Next, we will touch the horn. Also, 10 mil. It's nice to work on this vehicle, everything is standard. Match. This might be too short. There's actually one longer bolt actually in here we should use this bracket and 13 mil instead of 10. So it has a slot inside, so make sure that you push it, push that bracket inside the slot before you make it tight. Next we will do this cover. And then it's clips on here and one on top. Now we will connect upper radiator hose. as well as resin line. Next we will do the cross member and before we put it on we need to grow the hood cable. Five ten mil volts, two on the sides, and one in the middle. Next, we will attach the fan house into the radiator with those two brackets, plastic clips, oh, not plastic, but the metal clips, like that. Now you can see how far away the radiator is, so we need to 
push it forward and get it attached to his, the brackets. So I got the new low radiator hose and that was a Continental GO62569 uh, from Rock Auto, though it's slightly different. So this is the old one, this is the new one. So it seems like this L-shaped piece is an extra, but I will we'll get underneath and see how it fits. Maybe I will need to cut it just here. So I tried it and indeed I need to cut it to make it work. So I'm not sure why. This is where it should end. sure that it's at least a bit straight cut. Okay, let's give it a try. So underneath we have one hose and a hose clamp here, a main return hose, Transmission line, three quarter and eleven sixteen. Eleven sixteen to holes, three quarter to turn, and another eleven sixteen and three quarter. And I have also replaced the return hose, so I had to place another clamp here. Now we'll put this rail in. So those one, two, three goes into the openings in the frame over there. So one, two, three. And we put this on. So they hold by clips like this, so we put it in this direction and then just turn it. Here's a Phillips screwdriver. 90 degrees, nice and tight. Next, we will put the air box in. And so, as you can see, those rubber grommets came up across the box, so we will remove them from here. Put them in a frame and then put the box in. Okay, so last step will be to fill up the system with the coolant. This time we are using uh, Mercedes Benz um, coolant. We will use 4060 mix since we are in Canada and the temperatures can get below 40. And 50-50 is usually good till minus like 37. So we will mix this with the distilled water and fill it up until the reservoir is full. When it's full, we will start the vehicle, let the air out, make sure that there's no air in the system, make sure that the thermostat opens, then check for any leaks on all the connections that we touched and the radiator itself. And that should be it. Next, what we would need to do when the engine is warm and the vehicle is level, check the transmission fluid level since we lost a little bit of fuel uh, of fluid when we disconnected the lines. 
so to check the transmission level your vehicle needs to be leveled uh, warm and in idle shift all the gears then put in park and don't shut, in, shut down the engine come and check that's where your level should be in a proper range other than that it should be it thanks for watching please like and subscribe and as always do it yourself